What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So last week I gave you an introduction to Clothworks, the new cloth simulation extension for SketchUp. Um, this week I wanted to give you just kind of more of a step-by-step -step how it works. That video is more of a kind of an overview of the features. I wanted to give you more of a step-by-step -step, here's how you use the extension kind of video. So before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I put together to uh, basically teach SketchUp from start to finish. So help you get started fast, uh, teach you everything that you need to know. So everything from the basic tools in SketchUp to modeling for interior design, modeling for layout, and uh, also an introduction to photo realistic rendering. So if that's something you're interested in, you want some more uh, in-depth SketchUp training, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So once you've installed Clothworks, I just wanted to give you kind of a few different steps and things to consider when you're working with it. So to start off, let's go ahead and just create a couple shapes. So um, to start off, I'm going to create a sphere really quick using uh, two circles here in the follow me tool. And I'm just going to kind of extrude this in a circle just like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to triple click on that and I'm going to right click on it and put all of that geometry in a group. And then I'm going to erase out my original piece right there. So then I'll just kind of line this up with my base point. So now I have a sphere in here. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle that we're going to use as a cloth. So I'm just going to draw a flat rectangle right here and I'm going to use the scale tool to kind of adjust the size and then once I've done that I'm just going to double click on it I'm going to right click and I'm going to make that a group and I'm going to move it up above my sphere so now I basically have my two objects that I'm going to use in order to uh, basically drape this along the sphere. So in Clothworks basically what you have is you have three kinds of objects you have cloth, you have colliders, and you have pins and so cloth um, as, as you know is what we're simulating. So in this case we're going to make this rectangle into the cloth. A collider is anything that your cloth collides with. So in this case your collider would be your sphere because you're going to drape this over your sphere. And we'll talk about pins in a minute. And so the first thing you need to do is you need to set those objects that are going to be a part of the simulation within Clothworks. So to start, I'm going to, I'm going to right click on my sphere group. And remember this needs to be a group, it can't just be raw geometry. And then you're just going to go down to the Clothworks option and you're going to make this one a collider. So now you can see how if you go down here, you right click on your sphere, there's actually an option in here for collider. So you can tell that that has been set within Clothworks. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set this rectangle as a cloth. So just right click on it, again making sure that it's a group, and then go down to Clothworks and go to Make Cloth. And so now Clothworks considers this a collider and this a piece of fabric or a cloth. And so there's another step that we need to follow because right now if you were to simulate this, you can see how this basically just kind of sits on top of the sphere as kind of this weird rigid entity. And that's because this is basically in here as just uh, four lines and a face. So this face hasn't been subdivided. There's no geometry in here, so there's nothing for this to calculate. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to subdivide this. And so subdividing this means we're going to take this face and we're going to divide it up into some different points. And there's a tool in Clothworks that will let you do this. but just as kind of an idea for you, if you were to come in here inside this group and you were to split this into four different faces, and then you were to run Clothworks, you can see how you'd get bend along these different faces. So basically, fundamentally, the way that this works is you're just splitting your face up, and then this is actually calculating the way everything would bend based on that. This is actually built very similar to MS Physics in that way, in the way that it calculates this. Um, and this is the, the author of this extension is also the author of MS Physics. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to subdivide this into pieces using this subdivision um, functionality of Clothworks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this group and I'm going to go down to Clothworks, Cloth, and I'm going to use the simple grid option. So the simple grid option will allow you to split this up into basically different faces so that it can actually work as cloth. So I'm going to set my padding to two inches in this case. And what this is going to do is this is going to go in here and it's going to subdivide this face into individual, or it's going to subdivide this face into different pieces of geometry. And you can see when I ran that, it didn't really look like it did anything initially. But if you go up to view 
hidden geometry, you can see that what this did is this subdivided this into basically a two inch grid. And so now it's kind of up above the sphere and it's able to calculate the way that the cloth is going to work. And so one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this a little further down and then we're gonna run our first simulation. So this has been set as a collider, this has been set as a cloth, and it's been subdivided. So we're gonna go ahead and click the play button. What the play button's gonna do is that's gonna play your simulation. And you can see how this actually simulates your cloth falling down around this sphere. And depending on the speed of your computer, this may go fast, it may take a little bit longer, it just kinda depends. But you can see how this basically simulates the way that the cloth would work. However, one thing that I really don't like about this initially is you can see how the cloth is all like you've got different overlapping faces and that kind of thing. We don't really want that. So we need to go in and we need to fix that. And the other thing I want to do is I want to apply a texture to this. And so one thing that you need to know about when you're working with Clothworks is there's actually a button in here for toggle draped. So if I was to come in here and click on this cloth, I can actually click the button for toggle draped and it'll take this and it'll flatten it back out again. So I can toggle it so that it's draped or so that it isn't. And so I want to make this so that it doesn't collide with itself. The other thing I want to do is I want to apply a material to it. Because if I was to come in here and I was to apply a material, like let's say we were to apply this uh, multicolored striped upholstery material, it's not going to get mapped in here properly because it's already been draped. So you can see how this does really weird things with this um, with this material. And so that's the other thing we want to fix is we want to apply a material to it. And so I'm going to undrape this. And one thing I want to note when we do this with our material is you don't want to apply this to your group because it's still not going to work. So you can see I applied that to the exterior of my group and my UV mapping still doesn't work right. So, however, if I was to come in here and I was actually to apply this material to your raw geometry, so on this face, then if you were to redrape this, this would map your material properly so that it's actually in here like it was a real piece of cloth. So always apply your materials to the raw face when it's undraped. So, and then the other thing we wanna do is we wanna go into our uh, Clothworks UI. We wanna click on our object and go to our object settings and under cloth, you want to turn self collide on. So when you turn self collide on, what that's going to do is that's going to collide the material against itself, meaning that it won't overlap like it was before. So now that we've made those two changes, let's run this again. So you can see how now our material has been UV mapped properly to uh, this face meaning that it's actually in here like real piece of cloth. And then the other thing you'll know as this goes is this will now collide with itself, meaning you won't get those weird overlaps that we were getting before where those materials kind of went through each other. You can see how now they're just kind of hanging down, they're kind of bouncing off of each other. And one other thing I want to note about this is this is live, this is a live simulation, meaning you can come in here and you can actually click and drag a point within your simulation and you can actually move the cloth around yourself. So you could click and drag this down. You probably wouldn't want to do that too far. And you do need to be a little bit careful because you can get some kind of weird, uh, you can get some kind of weird overlaps with your geometry if you do this. So um, you do need to be a little bit careful with that, but you can come in here and apply or adjust this by clicking and dragging on it. And so once you've got your cloth simulation to a place that you want it to be, you can go ahead and you can click the stop button. And that'll lock your cloth into whatever point that it's at right here. And you can see how you can drape this and undrape this using the toggle draped tool. And so one other thing I wanna note is when you do this, you can come in here and you can right click on your cloth and once it's been draped, there's options for apply loop subdivision and apply Laplacian smoothing. Those will actually smooth out the edges of your cloth. So you can use those to make this a smoother, to make this geometry smoother. You can see how that kind of smoothed out your edges right here. But you can see how this is all perfectly UV mapped in here as well. So and then the other thing I want to talk about really quick is I want to talk about pins. So pins allow you to simulate hanging cloth. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're just going to draw a vertical rectangle. 
and we're going to make that a cloth and we're going to simulate hanging it using some pins. And so before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn the cloth off on this object because when we run this other simulation, I don't want it continuing to simulate this one. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down to cloth works and I'm going to go to cloth and I'm going to go to ignore. So now if I hit the play button, nothing's going to happen because it's not simulating this as a cloth anymore. And so now let's do the same thing over here with our hanging piece of fabric. So we're just going to right click on it. We're going to make it a group. We're going to right click and we're going to go down to cloth works. We're going to make it a cloth. Then we're going to go to cloth works, cloth, and we're going to subdivide it using a simple grid. So we're going to subdivide it using that two inch grid again. So now in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple different pins. And so pins basically, they create a fixed point within your cloth. So now if I was to run this simulation just real simply, you can see how everything in this cloth would simulate except this point right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple more pins. So there's a few ways you could do this. You could add these manually. You can also treat these like SketchUp geometry. So if I was to make a copy of this one over here, like I was copying anything else with the move tool in copy mode, you can see how that's going to hang based on that point. So you can treat these like normal SketchUp geometry. So what that means is in this case, I can use the move tool in copy mode. So I'm going to activate, I'm going to select this, activate the move tool, and then tap the control key to turn copy mode. And I'm going to set one right here. And then I'm going to type in divided by four and hit the enter key. And what that'll do is that'll create four equally spaced points between this point and this point. So now if I was to run this, you can see how it's going to hang based on these points right here. So you can use this to do a lot of interesting things. You can use this to create things like flags or a lot of other different kinds of stuff. And uh, so the other thing you can do with these is when you run your simulation, you can actually move them around. So what you can do is you can click in here and select them. And you can see how when you select your points, you get this kind of uh, you get this kind of gizmo thing that allows you to click and drag on these arrows to move everything around. So you can see how I can simulate moving different things together. And one thing to note about this extension is you need to be careful not to go in and click and drag super fast because what happens is you'll get some kind of weird um, overlap type stuff when you do that. Um, but in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this simulation. I'm going to go back and I'm going to undrape it. And so note that you can uh, toggle draped for both your pins and your fabric. So in this case, I'm going to select everything, go up and click toggle draped. And I'm just going to go into my Clothworks UI again, and I'm going to turn self collide back on. And there's other options in here that you can do different things with. So I may do a flag tutorial in the future where you get a flag waving in the wind. Um, where you have to change some of these things and you just kind of have to play around with these. Honestly, I didn't find a whole lot of information about them in the manual. So I will link to the manual as well. But um, we're going to set that to self collide. And then we're going to run this one more time. And so the thing I want to know is not only can you move these back and forth, if you hold the control key, you can also move them closer together and further apart. So if I hold control, and click and drag this, you can move these pins together just like this. So you can use those pins to do a lot of different things. And this is also a live simulation, meaning if I click and drag, I can actually simulate how that would look. And so I'm going to go ahead and stop this and we're going to select everything and undrape it. And I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to apply a material. And then we'll select all of this and we'll just toggle draped. And so now you can see how I have this material on here that's UV mapped and everything else. And so then the last thing I want to know, and I think I, I don't necessarily know that a lot of people know this, you can actually use this to simulate in addition to cloth, you can also use it to simulate rope or wire. And so what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to draw just kind of a base face right here and I'm going to make that a group. And then I'm going to come up above and I'm just going to draw a line 
right up above this object. And so what you can do is you can actually simulate this as if it was a piece of rope. And so in order to do that, you're going to right click on it and you're going to divide it. So we're basically subdividing this line in the same way that we subdivided our cloth over here. We're just doing it manually. But then when you select it, you can see how you have a lot of individual pieces of geometry where well, you can click and drag around those, right click and you can group them. And then you can do the same thing where you go to cloth works and you can click make cloth. And we'll make this object right here a collider. And so now if I was to play this, and I probably need to ignore this piece of cloth over here so it's not recalculating all of this. But if I run this, you can see how this is actually going to act like a piece of rope. So you can see how it kind of drapes over this edge. And I can click and drag this the same way we did before. And you do have to be a little bit careful again when you do that. But now this is actually acting like a hanging piece of rope. And so not only can you do that by draping it over an object, you can also use pins on something like this. So let's say I was to come in here and just create a few different pins and then simulate this. You can see how this would actually act like a hanging piece of rope. So you can click and drag on it if you can catch it. And you can see how this actually simulates that. So there's a lot of cool applications or something like that as well. And probably what I would do in this case is I would use I would use an extension like either pipe along path or lines to tubes if I needed to create some thickness here. I don't think it'll actually simulate a thickened piece of rope. I think you can do it with lines and then extrude something along those lines after the fact. And there's probably some other things you could do with that as well that I haven't had a chance to uh, mess around with. So that's where I'm going to end this video. What I want to hear from you guys is what uses you can think of for this. I want to create a video maybe next week or the week after kind of highlighting some different uses for this extension because I think there's a lot of things that uh, you can do with this that we haven't even thought about yet. But I'd love to hear from you guys what you want to do with this and uh, also what you thought of this tutorial. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.